पंद्रह सौ प्रीलोडेड गानों वाला की पैड फोन धमाकेदार साउंड के साथ कारवा मोबाइल हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सिक्स चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता विच इज सांख्य योगा द सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद our spiritual master and the founder and acharya of worldwide hari krishna movement in the previous chapter arjuna got perplexed and he was trying to understand krishna please explain me who is better a sanyasi is better because you are telling me to give up all these fruitive works or the position of a yogi is better who is working for krishna so krishna explained both the processes they are one path only one is finding the root another is watering the root a renouncer will attain the same end and a karma yogi will also attain the same end but one process is very long a renouncer who is gyan yogi will take many many births because he is doing research based his own limited intelligence and senses whereas a karm yogi or a bhakti yogi he engages himself in the service of krishna and then krishna being pleased with him the supreme personality of godhead he reveals himself and this process is na chirena digachati krishna explained it is very quick so a wise man should follow the direct path the quickest path rather than following the long serpentine route but nevertheless both the processes will lead to the same result here lord krishna is further explaining the superiority of karma yoga shri bhagavan vacha anashritah karma phalam karyam karma karoti yah sa sanyasi cha yogi cha na niragnir na chakriya The blessed Lord said, "One who is unattached to the fruits of his work and works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life, and he is a true mystic, not he who lights no fire and performs no work." So here Krishna is explaining who is a true renouncer and a true yogi. Sa sanyasi cha yogi cha. so some sanyasis they stop performing the agnihotra sacrifices which every householder is supposed to perform the fire sacrifice because a sanyasi is considered to be liberated there is no more obligation to do such yagyas but unless the heart is purified simply stopping the yagyas and assuming you have become liberated this is not recommended attitude so krishna is telling he is not actual sanyasi who stops giving up uh the who stops doing the sacrifice and who thinks i am a liberated man similarly a yogi may not be doing any activity sitting in one place but better than both of them the actual yogi the actual sanyasi is the person which is beautifully explained here in the first line anashritah karma phalam karyam karma karoti yah one who does not work to enjoy the results of his activities he is a real sanyasi because in other two cases a gyani he is also actually looking for the result of his activities although he has given up materialistic activities but still his activity of gaining salvation has got little self interest he wants his personal peace of moksha when the soul gets moksha liberation then there is immense peace brahmananda so that peace that self interest is still there in this activity of renunciation similarly a yogi may desire mystic power or may desire 
merging in the body of Krishna. So those who are followers of Eightfold Yoga system, usually they do it for the mystic powers, Ashtanga Yoga or Hatha Yoga. But some of them, they are advanced and they understand God has got a form which is present in the heart. But even though they understand God has got a form, they want to merge in that form. Unless they advance to the real stage and they become Bhakti Yogis. So the Yogi who is actually able to see Krishna within the heart, he becomes a devotee. He gets attracted by the beauty of Krishna. Other Yogi, they simply imagine the form of Krishna within the heart present as Vishnu Murti, the four-handed form, and imagining the form in the heart, they try to perfect their yoga system. Such devotees usually try to merge in the body of Krishna. So there is also self-interest. Either I want mystical powers, Ashtasiddhis, or I want to merge in the body of Krishna. But a Bhakti Yogi or a Karma Yogi, he does not have any selfish desires, who just wants to sacrifice all the activities, the results of the activities for Krishna. Thus, this is called real sannyas. This is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told. Na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, kavitamba jagadish kamaye, mam janmani janmani shware bhavatad bhaktir ahetuki tvai. Na dhanam, I do not want dhan, I don't want any money. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I don't want followers also. Na Sundarim, I don't want very beautiful wife for myself. Then what do you want? You want moksha? You don't want any of these material opulences? No. Mama Janmani Janmani Shwari, I don't even want liberation. This is called the topmost sannyas. The topmost yogi, he has no self-interest. Other yogis, sannyasis, they have this self-interest. I want moksha, I want liberation. But an actual yogi, Krishna is explaining here, he is real yogi, sa sannyasi, cha yogi cha, he is a renouncer, he is a yogi who has no self-interest at all, whose interest is simply janmani janmanishware bhavata bhaktir ahetukitvai, whose interest is only in serving God. You want to, you want me to have births here, life after life, then let me have it, but please engage me in your service. Or you want to give me liberation, want to call me to the spiritual abode of yours, that is also fine, but please engage me in your service. Pleasure of Lord, service of the Lord is the only desire, and such a person is true yogi. Anashrita karma phalam, karyam karma karotiya. He does the activities, but he is not attached to the results because he offers them to Krishna. So, very beautiful definition of sannyasi and yogi is given here. Then Krishna explains, Yam sannyasam iti prahur, yogam tam vidhi pandava, nahi asanyas the sankalpo, yogi bhavati kashchana. What is called renunciation is the same as yoga or linking oneself with the Supreme, for no one can become yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense gratification. So it is not the object of sense gratification which has to be renounced, but the desire for enjoying the object. The example given is that of a cashier. A cashier need not give up the money and need not enjoy the money for his personal interest. Both are illegal. If a cashier tells, I don't want money, take it away, I will not accept. No. It is your duty, you have been given the job of cashier so that you can accept money for the proprietor of the bank. And when the cashier uses the money for the proprietor of the bank, his bonding with the proprietor becomes strong. This is called yoga. This is called karma yoga or bhakti yoga. You work very nicely, you collect all the money and offer it to the proprietor. So giving up money is illegal. And if the cashier thinks, so let me enjoy all the money for my benefit, that is also legal. That also one cannot do. So sannyasis, those who give up their household and materialistic pursuits, they go to jungle and Himalayas and they try to practice yoga. They are also not properly situated. That is better than a materialist, but they have to advance further. Why they are not properly situated? Because they are thinking, my house or my village does not belong to me, but the jungle or Himalayas belong to me. I can live there. 
No sir, how can you renounce? And further, renunciation is possible when something belongs to you. So it never belonged to me. I am a tenant here. I have been given birth in this body. My body stays in some house or place as appointed by God. And for the assigned time, I will continue my activities. Then I will be forced to live, forced to leave that place. So thus, I am a tenant here. It is not my place. So where is the question of renouncing? That is why the real sannyas is anasaktasya vishayan yatharham upayunjataha nirbandhe krishna sambandhe yuktam vairagyam ucchate The right vairagya sannyas or renunciation is without getting attached to the objects of the senses. In whichever situation you are, you use the objects of senses around you the people around you in the service of Krishna, connect them back to Krishna because everything belongs to Krishna. This is called Yuktam Vairagya. This is perfect. This is real Vairagya or renunciation. Just like a cashier is completely renounced, he is not thinking I will enjoy one penny. He will collect millions and deposit everything in the bank offers with the proprietor. So this is called actual Vairagya. So this is very important point. Enjoying is illegal and giving up also is illegal. But using everything that God has given in the service of God, this is the perfect course of action which is being recommended to Arjuna here. You have been given the ability to fight, you have the training, now you fight, but fight for my satisfaction as per my direction. This is perfect yoga. This makes the relationship between the living entity and the supreme God proprietor very strong and this strong relationship connection is called yoga, the topmost yoga. Arurukshur Muner Yogam Karm Karana Muchyate Yoga Rudhasya Tasyaiva Shamah Karana Muchyate For one who is a neophyte in the Eightfold Yoga system, work is said to be the means. And for one who has already attained to yoga, cessation of all material activities is said to be the means. So now here in this chapter, Krishna will explain the Ashtanga Yoga process, which has got eight elements. Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Dharana, Dhyan, Pratyahar, Samadhi. So these eight elements when practiced under the guidance of a proper spiritual master, that is called Ashtanga Yoga not only practicing some breathing exercise, a segment of pranayam and some bodily exercises which are called asanas. These are but two elements of the eight which are supposed to be practiced to attain yogic perfection. So actually nobody should call oneself a yoga guru because whatever this yoga system we see, they are only teaching us for physical benefits mainly. So yoga is not for physical but for transcending the limits of the physique to go to spiritual platform. And any person who is perfectly practiced in this art of Ashtanga Yoga, he must have Ashta Siddhis also. Which are those Ashta Siddhis? Anima, Mahima, Laghima. One can become smaller than the smallest. Nobody can lock him anywhere. This is a Siddhi. And uh, even the Britishers have in their records, they would capture a person in the jail and then next day he would be out. So many times they tried to capture that sadhu, but then he would be out. We were not able to understand. Like this many instances are there. This is called Anima Siddhi. Similarly, Shukdev Goswami, liberated personality, the son of Vedavyas, he was able to stay in the womb of his mother for 16 years. How is it possible? So it is possible. Liberated personalities do have such Siddhis. Then Laghima person can become very light. One can walk on water or one can walk on sunbeams, such things are possible. Then Mahima, one person, person can become very huge. So whatever the descriptions of demons we see in the Krishna Leela, very huge bird or snake or horse, we think it is mythology. No, it is not mythology. It is a fact. Those people were great yogis. Yogis can change the form. Even now we can change the form, isn't it? Uh, although not much, now we are successful just in changing the gender. Male can become female and vice versa. Similarly, entire body also can be changed. So by gross process, uh, we are accomplishing this thing. 
but by subtle processes also it was possible and that is a yoga siddhi you can change take any desired form kama vasaita prakamya prapti whatever is there in the universe any planet you can just extend your hand and get it and uh, you can control ishitva vashitva other people's minds so like these eight siddhis are supposed to be in possession of a perfect yogi but nobody has even one of these siddhis these days so what we are understanding today in the name of ashtanga yoga is only pranayama and asanas which are meant to keep the body and mind fit body should be fit mind should be peaceful because only with peaceful mind person can focus on the super soul present within the heart which is the aim of yoga so the aim is forgotten just physical fitness is going on so here krishna is telling there are two stages in this ashtang yoga practice aruruksha and yoga arurha aruruksha means in the beginning stage work is said to be the means so asan pranayam these are various works you have to uh, spread your hands and legs twist and turn yourself breathe in breathe out and yam and niyam before that even practicing the physical postures and breathing exercises do's and don'ts are very important which we will see krishna will explain and people don't know that and don't follow that these do's and don'ts also are very tough so after yama and niyama you do asan and pranayam so these are called fruitive activities work is involved and after this on advanced stage shamah karanam uchyate cessation of work is said to be the means then you stop all work and meditate on supreme lord within the heart yada hi nendriyartheshu na karma svanu sajjate sarva sankalp sanyasi yoga rudhasta dochyate a person is said to have attained to yoga when Having renounced all material desires he neither acts for sense gratification nor engages in fruitive activities yoga rudha stadochyate so how do we understand that a person has reached advanced stage of yoga realization so here it is mentioned yada hi na indriyartheshu he does not indulge in enjoyment of senses today people are doing asanas and pranayam so that they can enjoy senses more body is fit to eat more and there is loss of belly fat and then there is increase in sexual power this is not the purpose the purpose is to completely regulate stop the activities of enjoying the material senses and na karmasva anushajjate stop the fruitive activities also either a person is working hard to get the objects of sense enjoyment or one is indulged in sense enjoyment this is life of a materialist and yogi means he has stopped both these activities he is neither engaged in enjoying his own senses nor he is working to get the objects of sense enjoyment then we can understand that a person has reached advanced stage of yoga uddhare datmanatmanam natmanam avasadayet आत्मैव हि आत्मनो बंधु आत्मैव रिपुरात्मनः अ मैन मस्ट एलिवेट हिमसेल्फ बाय हिज ओन माइंड नॉट डिग्रेड हिमसेल्फ द माइंड इज द फ्रेंड ऑफ द कंडीशन सोल एंड हिज एनिमी एज वेल इन द वेदास इन महाभारत दिस बॉडी इज कंपेयर्ड टू अ चैरियट इन चैरियट देयर आर हॉर्सेस so the horses are compared to the senses we have got five senses so our body chariot of body has got five horses eyes ears nose because of these senses only we are able to move around and do the activities so chariot cannot move around without horses senses are horses how the horses are controlled by reins so which are the reins in this body that is the mind mind is controlling the senses so if the senses are horses then the reins are compared to mind now who controls the mind that is called intelligence faculty of discrimination so charioteer is called intelligence and who is the rider or passenger that is the soul so we are the passenger in this chariot and we are supposed to give direction to the intelligence intelligence you please take me in this direction an intelligence 
controlling the reins he directs the horses you take me in this way that way. so if a person has not trained mind very nicely then the senses will go loose and the person will have a very horrible ride that is what is happening with us instead of we directing the mind and intelligence to control the senses we are taking the direction from the senses horses are running wildly wherever they find grass or eatables and then we are having a very horrible ride and suffering so vedic culture trains a person to regulate the senses very nicely by strengthening the controller of the chariot the intelligence so with intelligence or mind here it is mentioned one must elevate himself and not degrade himself so one who has controlled the mind the mind is friend but one who has not been able to control the mind mind will serve as enemy so that krishna explains further in the next verse bandhuratmatmanastasya अनात्मनस्तु शत्रुत्वे वर्ते शत्रुवत फॉर हिम हु हैज कॉन्कर्ड द माइंड द माइंड इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द फ्रेंड्स बट फॉर वन हु हैज फेल्ड टू डू सो हिज वेरी माइंड विल बी द ग्रेटेस्ट एनिमी सो वन हु हैज कॉन्कर्ड द माइंड ही इज एबल टू कंट्रोल द माइंड वेरी नाइसली देन माइंड इज बेस्ट फ्रेंड and if one has not been one is taking the dictates from the mind then it is very dangerous situation mind becomes one's enemy what is enemy enemy means a person who takes away your riches who plunders you who captures you or finally who comes and kills you and actually all these things are happening to us just because of mind the mind makes us believe that i am this body and enjoyment of body is my enjoyment and thus mind plunders away all the money that we earn in our life for temporary sense enjoyment which anyway never satisfies us it is very temporary and the desire to enjoy always keeps on increasing in this way mind plunders away all our money in temporary sense enjoyment so thus uncontrolled mind is enemy it is plundering you and then the enemy can capture you to do slavery and that is what mind does to us mind makes us believe you are the body this life is only life you should be famous you should maintain and show status in society and thus mind makes us slog very hard day and night not understanding that i am not the body i am spirit soul i am eternal why am i working for something temporary i should work something on the eternal platform for permanent results but mind creates illusion and makes us work very very hard day in and day out and everything that we attain it is left with the body here so mind puts us to slavery and then finally mind creates so many material desires because of which we have to take so many bodies life after life and undergo so many births and deaths thus uncontrolled mind is the cause of death so the death and the concomitant other problems diseases old age working very hard stress anxiety everything is being given to us because of uncontrolled mind who is acting as our enemy so this is very important we are trying to control missiles cruise missiles satellites space vehicles but we do not know how to control the mind so krishna is telling your mind is the biggest enemy if it is uncontrolled and it is the best friend if it is controlled so controlling of mind this training is very very important this is called shamaha mind control which was taught to the brahmacharis in the gurukul in the vedic school now in the school uh, children are uh, you know they encourage okay you let your senses loose parents think if i give whatever my child desires that would be the benefit of the child no it is the reverse the more you teach them a simple way of living regulation of senses the more they are able to advance in knowledge and they are able to make the best use of mind as their best friend so i request that we practice this very important element in the yoga process which is called controlling the mind so there are two ways of doing it that krishna will explain further so please uh, try to hear carefully what krishna is advising arjuna will ask krishna it is not possible for me mind is very difficult to be controlled then krishna recommends two things which are those two things 
please stay put we will discuss जितात्मन प्रशात परमात्मा सीतोष्णा सुख दुखेशो तथा मानापमान पवन हु हैज कॉन्कर्ड द माइंड द सुपर सोल इज ऑलरेडी रेस्ड फॉर ही हैज अटेन ट्रैंक्विलिटी टू सच अ मैन हैप्पीनेस एंड डिस्ट्रेस हीट एंड कोल्ड ऑनर एंड डिसऑनर आर ऑल द सेम वन हु हैज कॉन्कर्ड द माइंड सुपर सोल दैट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दिस एट फोल योगा सिस्टम विच इज डिस्क्राइब हियर इट इज ऑलरेडी रीच्ड बिकॉज माइंड इज आर ड्राइवर इट इज टेकिंग अस एवरीवेयर ईदर इन रिपीटेड बर्थ्स एंड डेथ्स और टू द स्पिरिचुअल किंगडम सो इफ यू सिट इन अ नाइस व्हीकल हुज ड्राइवर इज वेरी कंट्रोल्ड देन यू आर अज्यूम्ड टू हैव रीच द डेस्टिनेशन एज सुन एज यू बोर्ड द फ्लाइट ट्रेन और बस you become relaxed okay now i'm sitting it's just a matter of time i have reached my destination in a similar fashion krishna is telling super soul is already reached for one who has controlled the mind simply if you are able to do this then our perfection is assured just a matter of time and to such a person who has controlled the mind he is always very tranquil for tranquility we need not make any external adjustments just control the mind and then heat and cold honor and dishonor it's all the same ज्ञान विज्ञान तृप्तात्मा कूटस्थो विजितेन्द्रिय युक्त इच्यते योगी समलोष्ट्राश्म कांचन अ पर्सन इज सेट टू बी स्टैब्लिश्ड इन सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड इज कॉल्ड अ योगी और मिस्टिक वेन ही इज फुली सैटिस्फाइड बाय वर्च्यू ऑफ अक्वायर्ड नॉलेज एंड रियलाइजेशन सच अ पर्सन इज सिचुएटेड इन ट्रांसेंडेंस एंड इज सेल्फ कंट्रोल्ड He sees everything, whether it be pebbles, stones, or gold, as the same. So Krishna is explaining the progress in the ladder of yoga. First of all, one has to control the mind. Unless the mind is controlled, there is no question of coming to the platform of gyan or knowledge. Even theoretical pos- knowledge is not possible to understand. So control the mind, then we will be able to understand logics. but just understanding logics theory is not important unless it is put to practical which is called vigyan that is called realization a person we know fire is hot fire is hot but touching and experiencing the heat that is called vigyan realization so just repeating i am not the body is not sufficient one should be able to realize that i am not the body that is called vigyan and act on the platform of spirit soul so here it is explained gyan vigyan triptatma kutastho vijitendriya a person is said to be perfect yogi when samaloshtrashma kanchana when he sees stones pebbles and gold all on the same level oh really stone pebbles and gold i will see everything as one yes this is called advanced stage of yoga now we are indifferent towards stones and pebbles and gold is something we aspire for very valuable but when we are a yogi perfect yogi these things will be same for us why it will be same for us because uh, just like when a person is full he has eaten sufficiently in a feast even if you give him something he likes or he does not like both things are on the same platform he does not care for any more eating because he is completely full and satisfied so a yogi here it is explained gyan vigyan triptatma he is completely satisfied by the virtue of acquired theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge gyan and vigyan vigyan means self realization so when a person actually realizes the spiritual knowledge he becomes completely satisfied tript tript means satisfied self satisfied and then vijitendriya he is able to control his senses if you are full you have eaten sufficiently controlling tongue and belly is very easy you cannot take any more so such a yogi who is satisfied for him controlling the senses becomes very easy in the initial stages it is tough so we need to reach this platform where we are completely satisfied then a yogi advances further what is that level surin mitra ryudasina 
मध्यस्थ्वेशबंधुषु साधुष्वी च पापेशु समबुद्धिर्विशिष्य A person is said to be still further advanced when he regards all the honest well-wisher friends and enemies the envious the pious the sinner and those who are indifferent and impartial with an equal mind So in the previous verse we saw he sees no difference between the matter now he does not see difference even though there is apparent difference in the behavior of living entities around him somebody will act as a friend somebody will act as enemy somebody will praise somebody will criticize somebody would be honest well wisher he sees no difference at all why because he perfectly realizes this world is just like a drama nato natya dharo yatha so everybody is acting although they are not conscious they think oh this is reality but no nature is forcing us to act in certain way the spirit soul is same in the body of elephant that we saw shuni chaiva shapake cha pandita samadarshina pandita means learned person he does not make any difference here is a cow here is dog here is dog eater here is brahman chandal he does not make any difference because he sees these are only dresses so material nature makes us believe that i am this dress and the soul is behaving like dog cat fish tortoise human being man woman all because of hallucination but a person knows this just a temporary dramatic platform people are acting as per their dresses so somebody praises just like in drama two people are acting as enemies but as soon as the drama is over they are friends or even on stage they don't have any animosity in the heart they understand that we both are acting so in this way yogi realizes everybody simply acting under the control of material nature so nobody takes the dealings in a drama seriously so he regards everyone as equal same spirit soul the differences are because of all these external coverings so this is even more advanced stage thus in honor in uh, blame criticism he is always equally poised tranquil not disturbed at all whether i become rich or i remain poor it does not matter he just wants to shariram kevalam karma maintain his body whether a person becomes rich in drama or poor in drama ultimately it's a drama temporary platform we are completely different from temporary opulence or scarcity of this world yogi yunjita satatam atmanam rahasi sthitah ekaki yat chittatma nirashira parigraha a transcendentalist should always try to concentrate his mind on the supreme self he should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind he should be free from the desires and feelings of possessiveness now krishna is explaining the do's and don'ts of this yoga system before one even begins to practice this eightfold yoga system if at all we want to make our life perfect then we have to practice these do's and don'ts which are those do's and don'ts first of all a person should be a parigraha having no feelings of possessiveness one should be thoroughly convinced the house that i have property that i have people that i have do not belong to me everything belongs to god and nirashir nirashir means free from all desires having no material desires and then very important word is atmanam rahasi sthitah ekaki one should live ekaki alone rahasi means in a secluded place so one is supposed to live alone in a secluded place so now we see many many people they are practicing uh, these asanas and pranayams in community they call it group program or group Uh, sadhana kriya all these things they are not recommended here so bhagavad gita patanjali yoga sutra these are the most authorized uh, descriptions of practicing this yoga so this is a preliminary qualification perfection is not attained by doing it in group the yogi should do it alone in a secluded place and before that one has to attain freedom from all feelings of possessiveness and material desires next one one is supposed to do shuchau deshe pratishthapya sthiram asanam atmanah 
नातिच्रित नातिचम चैलाजिनकुशोत्तर तत्रग्रम मन यत चित्तेन्द्रिय क्रिय उपवेश्यासने योगम आत्म विशुद्ध फर्दर वेरी डिफिकल्ट रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन शुच उदेश प्रतिष्ठाप्य स्थिर आसन आत्मन टू प्राक्टिस योग वन शुड गो टू अक्लूडेड प्लेस एंड शुड ले कुश ग्रास ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड देन कवर इट विथ अ डियर स्किन एंड अ सॉफ्ट क्लॉथ The seat should neither be too high nor too low, and should be situated in a sacred place. The yogi should then sit on it very firmly, and should practice yoga by controlling the mind and the senses, purifying the heart, and fixing the mind on one point. First of all, shucha udeshe prathishthapi. A person go, should go to shuchi means clean. Clean means place with his satvik. it cannot be practiced in cities and villages which are in mode of passion one has to go to satvik that means jungles and mountains natural places so it is very difficult who is willing to go to jungle or mountains but this is the first prerequisite before explaining anything krishna tells this you control your material desires you finish the feelings of possessiveness and you leave everything and you go to a secluded place and then sthiram asanam atmanah you sit down in uh, a firm pose so initially various asanas and postures a person is supposed to do and finally one has to just sit in one place and close all the activities of the senses shana shana uparamet no sense should be indulged in activities and a person is expected not to sleep not to eat and not to drink also for many many years person has to keep on sitting like this so sometimes that is why the flesh is eaten away by the insects because you have to sit for many many years hundreds and thousands of years also sometimes there are ant hills and there are examples like hiranyakashipu was doing this tapasya the flesh was eaten away by the insects or many yogis the ants made hill on their bodies so very severe tapasya so without shaking without worrying person should fix his intelligence uh, his mind on one point so if a person is not having positive knowledge of god and out of love person is always thinking of krishna then this mechanical way of material detachment or fixing mind on krishna that is recommended so it's very tough again krishna is telling secluded sacred place secluded sacred place Now also, if you go to the places uh, Haridwar, Rishikesh, and upwards, you'll find yogis sitting there, but they don't do in group. If at all they are doing, they do not know. Some yoga societies are sprung up, but that is not as per the instructions given in Sankhi Yoga in this chapter, either by uh, Lord Krishna who is explaining to Arjuna or Kapil Muni who explained the same process to Dev Hoti. Alone, you have to go, and you don't uh, get carried away by oh. what will happen who will take care of me person should be completely dependent upon god one should not fear or oh, some snake may come tiger may come even if tiger is coming you cannot look towards the tiger you keep on staring at the tip of nose as krishna mentions here samam kaya shirogrivam dharayan nachalam sthirah samprekshya nasikagram swam dishascha navalokayan प्रशातात्मा विगत ब्रह्मचारी व्रते स्थित मन संयम्य मच्चि युक्त आसीत मत्पर वन शुड होल वंस बॉडी नेक एंड हेड इन स्ट्रेट लाइन नॉट इन अ लूज पोस्चर एंड आई शुड बी हाफ क्लोज हियर इट इज मेन्शंड एंड स्टेयर स्टडली एट द टिप ऑफ द नोज सम प्रेक्ष्य नासिकाग्रम स्वाम इट इज नॉट मैंशन यू क्लोज योर आईज कंप्लीटली विथ योर आईज यू शुड स्टेयर एट द टिप ऑफ द नोज सो इफ यू ओपन योर आईज कंप्लीटली यू मे गेट डिस्ट्रैक्टेड बाय द मोशन ऑफ वेरियस ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड इफ यू क्लोज कंप्लीटली देन यू मे फॉल अस्लीप सो इन मेनी योगा सोसाइटीज दे आर टेलिंग क्लोज द आईज कंप्लीटली एंड मोस्ट ऑफ दैम दे फॉल अस्लीप इन दे थिंक ओ येस आई एम फीलिंग सच ग्रेट पीस but this piece is not the result of any yoga or meditation it is because we had fallen asleep 
So completely closing the eyes is not recommended. Eyes are half closed. Staring at the tip of nose. And Prashant Atma Vikat Bheer person should be completely devoid of fear. And because they have strong faith in God, God is there in the heart of all the living entities. So God will protect me if he wants to protect. And if he wants to finish this body, then he can finish it. So a person is fearless. So sitting in a jungle, there are no lights, nobody to help you, no protection. Alone you have to keep on sitting. So many wild animals, but a person should be fearless. And Brahmachari Vrate Sthitaha, calling Brahmacharya is very important. <coughs> Now, unfortunately, some people are diluting the meaning also of the Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya, they are telling simply you discuss about spiritual life, about Brahma. That is called Brahmacharya. No, the definition of Brahmacharya is given by various sages. It is uh, uh, like sage Hyagyavalkya says, Karmana manasa vacha sarva vasthatu sarvada sarvatra methunya parityago brahmacharyam prachakshate. Karmana manasa vacha means in actions in mind and in speech sarva avasthasu sar- in all situations all circumstances at all times sarvatra mathunya parityago one should give up sex life that is called brahmacharya so if a person wants to indulge in sex life sorry sir it is not possible so in gyan school and in ashtanga yoga school it is strict no one cannot indulge in sex life at all but in the bhakti school sex life is allowed that also krishna will explain in the 10th chapter so sex life is allowed for the grahasthas but as per the regulative principles uh, not for simply carnal enjoyment but for bringing a good soul an advanced spiritual soul in this world so that he can help himself and others in attaining the goal of life so for this proper rules and regulations are there governing the sex life also so such a person is admitted a regulated householder in the bhakti school because bhakti school is very very powerful because there is so much pleasure tripta atma person is so much satisfied in engaging in service of krishna that he is able to automatically come out of the clutches of sens- sensual pleasures even though he is living in the household affairs but in other schools because there is no pleasure of acting in service of krishna you are simply cultivating knowledge impersonal knowledge or you are sitting somewhere and trying to mechanically and artificially control the senses by not looking at anything by not eating anything by not interacting with anybody and mechanically controlling the airs within the body thus pacifying the mind mechanical process you are doing but bhakti is spontaneous process when you engage in service of krishna krishna gives knowledge from the heart there is attraction so much pleasure in such activity that automatically person gives up lower pleasures of sense enjoyment so such sex life is allowed in the bhakti school that also under regulation for producing good children but otherwise in other schools it is strict no first of all before following the process of gyan yoga or ashtang yoga you give up your family life and sex life you come to jungle himalayas mountains and there you sit alone without any fear eyes half closed body neck head in straight line and in this way you learn to meditate focus mind on one point and further it is mentioned mana sanyamya now mind should be controlled not so that it should be focused on candle light or sun moon or simply our breath ultimately so that mat chittaha krishna has mentioned here one should meditate upon me mat chittaha consciousness should be fixed on me direct word is used here but nobody tells this that's that you meditate on krishna so by controlling the mind mat chittaha yukta asit mat paraha mat paraha means krishna should be made the goal of life the goal of life is not to get some powers or to awaken your kundalini and do some magical feats for gaining public attention ultimately whatever you attain that will be lost once we leave the body so a sensible person who understands yoga also knows the purpose of yoga and the purpose is mat paraha going to krishna should be made the ultimate aim of life yunjan evam sadatmanam yogi niyatmanasah 
शांति निर्वाण परमा मत्संस्थागछति दस प्रैक्टिसिंग कंट्रोल ऑफ द बॉडी माइंड एंड एक्टिविटीज द मिस्टिक ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट अटेन्स टू द किंगडम ऑफ गॉड और द अबोर्ड ऑफ कृष्णा बाय सेसेशन ऑफ मटीरियल एग्जिस्टेंस सो दिस वर्ड मत संस्थाम इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हियर संस्था मीन्स इस्टैब्लिशमेंट so krishna has got his own establishment this is very important point to understand this we are discuss in the beginning of bhagavad gita also god the absolute truth is realized in three different understandings three different phases that is explained in shrimad bhagavatam vadanti tat tat vividah tatvam yaj gyanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabdyate the same ultimate truth reality from whom everything is emanating is maintained by and he only creates systematic destruction of the world who is he the supreme truth he is understood in three phases brahm parmatma and bhagwan which are non different from one another the example given is that of milk in the shastras somebody will tell what is milk oh milk is something white if he simply uses his visual sensation to see milk he can only understand it is white and uh, when a person is able to touch he will tell oh it is liquid when a person is able to taste he will describe the taste of milk also so in this way the same milk is perceived in different way depending from which sense we are approaching milk if we approach milk from eyes we will tell it is white if we approach closing the eyes we simply touch the milk we will tell oh milk is liquid and if we taste it we will describe the taste of the milk so the same milk is having different perceptions depends through which sense we are approaching the milk but what is milk if we tell milk is only liquid that is not the perfect understanding of milk if we tell milk is only white that is also not perfect understanding milk is a substance milk in a similar fashion the absolute truth is a personality he is a person unless the origin has got a form has got various qualities of uh, having the tendency to eat having tendency to cut jokes having tendency to socialize how shall we in the creation develop such qualities the child is a person because father is person these qualities are passed down in the generations so there is no possibility of a drop having any quality which is not present in the ocean there is no possibility the ocean is having everything that a drop is having plus many more things which a drop is not having so god or the origin of this world should have everything that we have and many things which we do not have so this is simple to understand something is eternal from which everything is coming out now that thing as some people assume it is simply an energy when they approach through the process of gyana so yes supreme god is also energy because there is no difference between the energy and energetic just like sun and sunlight there is no difference sunlight cannot exist without sun or sun cannot exist sun glow cannot exist without its light both are together one unit only in that sense there is no difference between god and his energy but still there is difference so if absolute truth is simply energy then why so many forms man woman and we want to socialize we want to eat this eating tendency enjoying tendency playing tendency socializing tendency how it is coming in us because it is present in the absolute truth so this is very this personal understanding is very important because of lack of impersonal understanding simply talking energy 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 and forgetting the energetic people have become disinterested in spiritual life oh what will i do by spiritual perfection it appears kind of suicide that you have to go and mix in some energy at least even though there is misery here there is some pleasure i laugh, laugh talk walk with people but no spiritual life is also full of personal interaction spiritual life is also there is a spiritual world just like here the civilization is different in jungle civilization could be different in uh, rich countries the comforts of life civilization language is different similarly in the spiritual abode where the bodies are completely made up of spirit where the supreme person lives there is also civilization and krishna is telling here mat sanstham to that establishment or my abode my kingdom 
adigachati the yogi attains that place this is the purpose of yoga if a yogi is not having knowledge of abode of krishna then he may transfer himself to any other planet which is which is having better comforts of life those are described in the vedas but if he has perfect knowledge he does not desire to go to any place which is temporary within this material universe he simply tries to go to mad sansthan adigachati krishna's abode so it is not fantasy if we are hearing for the first time you need to deliberate upon it uh so we have to understand if you do not have guidance about a place then we follow a map we follow the books if somebody tells us that this is a population of this place this is the culture of that place we cannot go and see that we read it from the books similarly we read from the vedic literatures what is the situation of the place which is completely made up of spirit where god lives so one should try to do research on bona fide book directly going and doing research about different countries may not be possible for everyone if we are advanced yogi we can fly in there using siddhis and we can go and practically see the spiritual world but that may not be possible for everyone so other normal people just like we read the books and we understand that this is the technology they have gone to this place and they have found like that we hear but research should be done on the authoritative book in a similar fashion we should read carefully that vedas this is fantasy mythology or reality and if we have a careful reading under proper guidance we understand that it is perfect fact it is written and approved by people who have dedicated their life just to find truth and nothing else they would live in jungles just do research about truth and others who are fortunate they understand truth in the guru parampara coming from god himself that is vedic knowledge नाश्नतस्तु योगोस्ति न चैकाशनत न चाति स्वप्नशील से जागृत नार्जुन देर इज नो पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ वंस बिकमिंग अ योगी ओ अर्जुन इवन इट्स टू मच और इट्स टू लिटल स्लीप्स टू मच और डज नॉट स्लीप इनाफ नाउ कृष्ण इज मेन्शनिंग फर्दर regulations do's and don'ts in yoga there is no possibility of doing yoga if one eats too much or too little that is why and further another understanding is what is too much eating not just quantity but also variety it is not required to kill animals if we simply want to maintain our body and soul together for the purpose of attaining doing yoga so eating animals is also called excess eating or overeating unnecessary we should not cause harm to living entities who are highly conscious if somebody cuts our hand we feel pain we are giving pain to them also if we kill the calf cow keeps on crying always feels very bad just like a mother loses a child they also have feelings so why to give so much unnecessary trouble to other living entities simply for satisfying the taste which can be satisfied by a uh, very healthy consumption of natural food in which killing is not involved so if you want to practice yoga such regulation is very important nashnatash tu yogosti a person cannot do yoga if he overeats if he eats more quantity or more variety which is not required just to keep body and soul together and if he eat less then also it is not possible if somebody eats less than it is told in the ayurveda they will get tuberculosis and if they eat more then they will get diabetes so regulation in eating is important and regulation in sleep is also important yes we have to minimize our eating and sleeping but not artificially but gradually the more we advance in the process of spiritual life the more realization awakens i am not the body the desires of the body gradually mitigate but artificially it should not be done as much as the body requires we should fulfill to that extent so that is why it is being recommended in the vedas one should eat at fixed times the fixed amount the amount recommended for yogi is 50% should be filled with solid food suppose you eat chapatis or bread and you are full by eating six chapatis then you eat three that is called 50% solid and 25% should be filled with liquid we can have some liquid in our food or we can have water 
and then 25% should be left for air circulation. In this way, we will be able to keep our body free from all the diseases. And if our diet is controlled, then we need not practice any gymnastics or other things. Srila Prabhupada explains, we will be fit simply by controlling the diet. So, so many other exercises, asanas, pranayams are mentioned for people who cannot digest their food. So if we are regulation, if we have regulation in controlling our tongue, then a person can maintain very good health. Simply we have to eat on time, sleep on time, get up on time by controlling our tongue and having a very regulated, disciplined life. Anybody can maintain his health very nicely. But this regulation is important. Further, Lord Krishna explains four kinds of regulations in order to mitigate all stress of life using yoga. Krishna explains, Yuktahara viharasya Yukta Cheshtasya Karmasu Yukta Swapnava Bodhasya Yogo Bhavati Dukha He who is temperate in his habits of eating, sleeping, working and recreation can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. So any yoga we are following, even we are following Bhakti Yoga, we are chanting the names of God, sometimes the devotees miss this part that we have to have regulation, great discipline in our life. If we want even material happiness, we need to have great discipline in our life. If we are disciplined in all our activities of eating, sleeping, making, mating, talking, then we will be happy. Material miseries will not touch us. So Krishna mentions specially four kinds of regulations and they are Yukt Ahar. Ahar means diet. What Krishna has mentioned in the previous verse, it is very important. And among the diet also, what kind of diet we should take that we discussed in 13th verse of 3rd chapter. What is that? Krishna mentions, Bhunjante te tvagham papa ye pachanti atma karanat yagya shishtashina santo vachyante sarvakilvishai One should eat only food which is offered to Krishna. That becomes spiritualized in its effect. And then the force of material nature Prakritim cha it does not affect us, it keeps on reducing the more we take prasadam. So the food which is offered to Krishna under the guidance of spiritual master or which is offered in the yajna, now in Kali Yuga it is not possible, that food becomes spiritually surcharged. And by taking that food, a person remains away from the influence of material energy and one is able to think of God always. So first of all, one should take only prasadam if one wants to advance in spiritual life. And another regulation the scriptures mention in eating is doing fasting. That is also very important for spiritual advancement of life and also for keeping the body fit. Fasting is very important, especially twice in a month a person is supposed to fast. That is the 11th day of waxing and waning moon, which is technically called Ekadashi. So on two Ekadashis, the 11 days of the fortnight, person is supposed to fast, minimum. And then there are various other days of appearance uh, of God, disappearance also of various spiritual masters. As guided by the scriptures, we are supposed to perform this. This fasting is very important for spiritual growth and for controlling the senses. If we control our tongue, then all other senses automatically come under control. If we fast, other senses don't agitate us much. Then Yukta Vihar, the recreation or the process of producing progeny, procreation should also be regulated. That is called Yukta Vihar. And then Yukta Cheshtasya Karmasu. So after regulating your recreation, procreation, next thing is Karmasu. One should not work very hard. Work also should be regulated. People think if I work very hard, then I can increase my opulence in life. This is a wrong understanding. As it happens in our jobs also, once we have got a designation, our salary is fixed till next appraisal. Now if you perform very nicely, in the next appraisal, uh, we'll have more salary. It will be increased. Similarly, it is told in the Vedas, as per the activities what we are doing now in this life, our future opulence is getting decided. So as soon as we take birth, our opulence is fixed as per destiny. Now what is the meaning of fixed? Just like our salary is fixed in our office, we have to at least attend the office. 
but even if you work very hard for that year it will not be changed it's not possible so for this life we cannot change it even though we work very very hard and how we increase our opulence by following the path of religion that is why the scriptures mention dharma arth kaam and moksha if you want to have arth more wealth in your life you have to follow dharma first of all otherwise without following dharma we may appear to be accumulating more wealth one person can see direct correlation i work more over time i get extra money but no that money will not stay with us we are destined to enjoy a certain amount of opulence if we accumulate more money either the disease will take it away or some legal fees will take it away or the thieves will take it away or our other members of family will enjoy but we personally will not be able to enjoy our opulence is fixed so that is why a person should not work very hard krishna has mentioned here yukta karmasu anyway what you are going to get by regulated work so in shrimad bhagavatam it is mentioned maximum 8 hours a person should spend in his vocational duties job business whatever you are doing then balance time should be spent for spiritual activity this is called regulation if somebody sleeps okay destiny means it will happen automatically so veda still no nai suptasya singhasya pravishanti mukhe magra tiger is sleeping and thinking i am powerful rabbit will enter my mouth it is not going to happen so sleeping is not recommended neither slogging is recommended regulated work maximum 8 hours then destiny will unfold its course so regulation in eating regulation in recreation regulation in endeavor and yukta swapna av bodhasya yogo bhavati dukkha sleeping also has to be regulated what is regulated sleeping so that body is refreshed so again we can engage itself in the service of krishna so for a healthy person 6 hours of sleep is sufficient we should not sleep more than 6 hours if we are requiring more sleep in our current situation that means we are very heavily influenced by the modes of ignorance tamoguna so we should try to minimize gradually by regulating our diet and our work we'll be able to do it so it should be brought to not more than 6 hours at night and we should sleep early and get up early in the morning getting up in brahm muhurta brahm muhurta muhurta is a period of around 48 minutes and brahm muhurta begins 90 minutes before sunrise so that muhurta we are expected to get up and practice uh, our spiritual practices in that time and the most important spiritual practice for this age kali yuga as lord krishna has and will recommend is chanting of his holy names so this should be performed in the brahm muhurta when we get up and that is good for our health as well and anything if we read books scriptures at that time it will be five times more effective so initially we may feel sleepy because the body has not been trained nicely but we have to train for spiritual advancement and to keep away even material diseases so sleep early and get up early in the morning in the brahm muhurta time and if required maximum one hour should be spent in the daytime for sleep not more than that otherwise these are sciences otherwise again we'll come under the mode of ignorance sometimes we may wonder i am even though i have taken two hours of rest in the daytime or three hours more rest still i am feeling lazy i drag myself because we have been uh, under the influence of tamoguna a tamasic person will feel always always a tamasic person will feel always lazy and uh, heaviness will be there enthusiasm will not be there so do not sleep more than one hour in the daytime that is optional so in this way one should regulate these four activities ahar vihar cheshta and swapna yada viniyatam chittam atmanne vavatishthate nispriha sarva kamebhyo yukta ityuchyate tada when the yogi by practice of yoga disciplines his mental activities and becomes situated in transcendence devoid of all material desires he is said to have attained yoga so this is the purpose of yoga ultimately one should be reaching a platform where he is devoid of all material desires yatha deepo nivatastho nengate sopama smrita yogino yata chittasya yunjato yoga matmanah 
As the lamp in a windless place does not waver, so the transcendentalist whose mind is controlled remains always steady in his meditation on the transcendent self. Yatro paramate chittam niruddham yoga sevaya Yatra chayvatmanatmanam pashyanatmani tushyati Sukham atyantikam yattat Buddhi grahyam atindriyam Veti yatra na chayvayam Sitas chalati tatvataha Yam labdhva cha param labham Manyate nadhikam tataha Yasmin sthito na dukkhena Guru na pi vichalyate Tam vidya dukkha sanyoga Viyogam yoga sangyutam The stage of perfection is called trance or samadhi when one's mind is completely restrained from material mental activities by practice of yoga. This is characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and to relish and rejoice in the self. In that joyous state, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness and enjoys himself through transcendental senses. Established thus, one never departs from the truth. And upon gaining this, he thinks, there is no greater gain. Being situated in such a position, one is never shaken. Even in the midst of greatest difficulty, this indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. So this is the solution. It is not by economic development, gaining more degrees or having more followers in the society. We think that will make us happy No. The solution for all the miseries arising from material contact is coming to the platform of Samadhi. Samadhi means complete absorption in God. So God is present in our heart in the Vishnu Murti four-armed form and person with his purified mind. If there is dust on the mirror, we cannot see our form. So mind is compared to mirror. When the mirror is clean, we can see ourselves. In a similar fashion, when the mind is cleansed, so for cleaning the mind, here the process of Ashtanga Yoga is recommended. You practice Pranayam and Yam, Niyam, Asan, Dharana, Dhyan, Pratyahar. Stop the activities of the senses. Then finally the mind is cleansed. And with this clean mind, we can see who am I. And we can see the Super Self also, who is God seated within the heart. And when a person without any deviation is able to see God within the heart, then that is called Perfect Samadhi. So in this also, as we discussed, there are two stages. The Ashtanga Yogis, and the Dhyan Yogis who are able to see the Paramatma form by visualizing. The description is given in uh, the Sankhya Yoga explained by Lord Kapila in Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, his clothes, his helmet, earrings, club disc, conch shell, everything, the description of his form is there. So reading that form, Yogi visualizes that in the heart. So if they are simply visualizing that form, they may go and merge in that form, that is also not the perfection. But by concentrating, visualizing that form, eventually some of them very rarely are able to see Krishna within the heart, actually see. So one is visualizing that God is present, God's form, and in another instance, God personally manifests himself within the heart. So when God being pleased by the yogi, manifests himself within the heart, then it is no longer visualization or imagination. One practically sees with purified mind and such people become bhakti yogis. They develop strong love and affection for God and they transfer themselves to the kingdom of God. So this is the stage of Samadhi. When a person is completely attracted by the form of Krishna and the mind and all the senses also become purified. Then he is enjoying spiritual happiness with all his purified senses and then he is able to get freedom from all the miseries. Nothing in the world can disturb him. Yasmin sthitona dukkhena guru napi vichalyate. Then even greatest miseries can happen to them. The yogi will not be disturbed at all. And uh, bhakti yogi reaches this stage easily. He need not go and sit there in the jungle. He simply engages in the service of Krishna and Krishna being happy with his service becomes visible in the heart. So even Bhakti Yogi is doing any activity, walking, talking, everywhere, he is always able to see Krishna within the heart. 
and even there are greatest difficulties in life the example is of haridas thakur who was being beaten very badly or uh, a prostitute was sent to attract haridas thakur who was a very young man haridas thakur is a person who attained this platform who exhibited to the world simply by chanting the holy names he is called namachari he appeared 500 years ago so he was simply chanting the holy names he showed to the world that see this is the process for kali yuga simply by chanting you can attain this platform that is why all the bona fide religions of the world they tell please chant the names of god so by chanting he became so advanced that he was beyond all the biological needs of sleeping mating eating practically 24 hours he was just chanting sometimes he would sleep for half hour half an hour or one hour not more than that so some envious people they sent very beautiful prostitute to entice him but he was not at all disturbed the other prostitute also by his mercy so such mercy is not possible in this ashtang yoga you have to practice on the dint of your strength but in bhakti yoga it is a process of personal mercy either god or any person who is dear to god if he is merciful immediately person can become elevated so this prostitute she was simply sitting there and haridas thakur told please come tomorrow tomorrow i will satisfy you she was thinking oh i am uh, i think i am able to attract him but she was not knowing the mind of this great sage so he was knowing simply by hearing my chanting she will become purified so she came for three nights and third night she fell at the feet of haridas thakur and she herself started chanting practically 24 hours a day surpassing all the needs of body so this is the very sublime process of bhakti yoga of the chanting of names of krishna so such a situation was exhibited even by bhishma dev who was lying on the bed of arrows those of you who are aware of the great battle of kurukshetra so this bhagavad gita is a very small segment of that mahabharat once the battle starts then arjuna shoots so many arrows on bhishma and then he is lying on the bed of arrows but he is undisturbed he is speaking great knowledge so we have seen practical instance of such personalities who have exhibited this samadhi that even though body is completely practically destroyed but they are in bliss so this is what we are supposed to do what we are doing indulging in some videos audios some mundane temporary enjoyment no human life is meant to attain this pleasure yasme sthito na dukhe na guru na api vichalyate even the greatest misery does not disturb सनिश्चयन योक्त योगो निर्विण्ण चेतसा संकल्प प्रभवान कामास त्यक्वा सर्वान शेषतः मनसैवेन्द्रियग्रामं विनियम्य समन्ततः वन शुड एंगेज वन सेल्फ इन द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ योगा विथ अनडीविएटिंग डिटर्मिनेशन एंड फेथ वन शुड अबैंडन विदाउट एक्सेप्शन all material desires born of false ego and thus control all the senses on all sides by the mind so sense control is very important over and over again lord krishna is telling one should control all the senses on all the sides by the mind and without exception all material desires have to be given up and one should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with undeviating determination and faith so material world is so designed not to let us advance in spiritual life so once we start following this process so many impediments may come so person has to be very very determined if success is not attained immediately or there are fall downs which will be there in the beginning as a child learns to walk it falls down but child should not become uh, completely devastated i will never be able to walk no there is a stage so it will be difficult in the beginning we may commit mistakes but we have to stand up and with determination we have to again pursue the process of yoga shanai shanai rup ramed buddhya dhriti grahitaya atma sanstham manah kritva na kinchit api chintayed gradually step by step with full conviction one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence and thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone 
and should think of nothing else. Yato yato nishchalati manash chanchalam asthiram tatastato niyam yaitad atman neva vasham nayet. From whatever and wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. Prashant manasam hiyenam yoginam sukham uttamam upayati shant rajasam brahma bhutam akalmasham The yogi whose mind is fixed on me verily attains the highest happiness. By virtue of his identity with Brahma, he is liberated, his mind is peaceful, his passions are quieted and he is freed from sin. So if we have broken some laws of nature, we have to suffer for that. So we have discussed this before, we are discussing again. Please do not think any immediate cause, the people around us, the political or financial situation or the weather conditions are responsible for our suffering. We are responsible for our suffering. We have broken laws of nature and the people, the situation, they are merely instruments of our suffering. We are suffering because of our sins of this and previous lives. Now what is the solution? How to come out of it? So entire material world's design is so that living entity realizes I can be satisfied only in the service of God. So if somebody engages in the service of God, gets fixed up, then he is relieved of all the sinful activities. So this is the solution of solving all the problems of life. And that Krishna explains here how to get freedom from sins. Akalmasham upayati shanta rajasam brahma bhutam akalmasham When the mind is fixed upon me. So you may ask in this shloka, upon me is not mentioned. Why we are telling upon me? Translation it is mentioned. So this is the value of the translation of the Acharyas who know the entire Bhagavad Gita. We have seen in the previous verses, no, if you remember, Mat Chittaha, Mat Paraha, I should be the ultimate goal, the consciousness should be fixed upon me and further also Krishna will tell, mind should be fixed upon me. So in order to help us understand what should be the situation of mind, it has been added in the translation. Yunjanevam sadatmanam yogi vigata kalmashaha Sukhena brahma sansparsham atyantam sukhamashnute Steady in the self, being freed from all material contamination, the yogi achieves the highest perfectional stage of happiness in touch with the Supreme Consciousness. So by touching the Supreme Consciousness, when the tongue touches, Nice edible items, delicious items, we get pleasure. When the soul touches the Supreme Self, there is generation of highest pleasure, unlimited pleasure for which we are hankering. Sarva Bhutastham Atmanam Sarva Bhutani Chatmani Ikshate Yoga Yuktatma Sarvatra Samadarshanaha A true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized man sees me everywhere. Yo maam pasyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pasyati tasyaham na pranasyami satchame na pranasyati For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. So this is the perfection of yoga. One who sees Krishna everywhere and everything in Krishna. Now how is it possible? Either everything can be in somebody or somebody can be in a thing. How both things are possible? Yes, so all these contradictions are perfectly adjusted in the personality of God. There is nothing impossible in his personality. That is what Krishna did. Krishna opened his mouth to Yashoda when his friends were accusing that he has eaten mud. Mother Yashoda wanted to know because mud is not good uh, for child's health. Krishna told, no, you can see, verify. I'll open my mouth. So when Krishna opened the mouth, then Mother Yashoda could see all the universes in the mouth of Krishna. And she could even see herself and Krishna within Krishna's mouth. 
So what is this thing? Krishna is within the universe or universe is within Krishna? So these are the mystical opulences of the Supreme Personality of God. So yogi sees Krishna everywhere and everything in Krishna. An example is given. It is just like mother out of her great fondness and love for her child. When the child is away, mother sees anything which is in connection with the child. Either the clothes of the child or maybe the water bottle of the child. Mother's heart becomes full of pleasure. Loving affection is revived. Now, because limited number of things are in connection with child, the heart is not always full of love. But because everything is coming from God in this world, so yogi knows nothing is existing independent of God. So that is why an actual yogi Premanjana Charitta Bhakti Vilochanena Santas Sadai Viridayeshu Vilokayanti so an actual yogi whose eyes are tinged with the salve of love of God, he is able to see Krishna everywhere, just like mother sees her child everywhere in the child's belongings. Because the whole world belongs to God, the yogi is always completely full of love and thus enjoying great bliss wherever whatever he sees around him. He sees God everywhere. This is the perfection of consciousness. Sarvabhutasthitam yomam bhajatte katvamasthitaha Sarvathavartmanopi sayogi mai vartate The yogi who knows that I and the super soul within all creatures are one worships me and remains always in me in all circumstances. So yogi should know that Krishna is only present as the super soul they are one so this is also very important point so krishna has got many many forms advaita machita manadim ananta rupam even a yogi who is expert in ashtanga yoga process they can expand themselves up to eight or nine forms so god can expand himself into unlimited forms and one such expansion is the paramatma expansion by which Krishna expands himself and is situated in the hearts of all of us. And thus he is guiding us. We had some desires in previous life. So by his arrangement, nature has given us this body. And Krishna from the heart inspires us. You wanted some enjoyment in previous life. Now you please have it. But he also guides what kind of enjoyment is good and bad. But if you don't listen, then Krishna sanctions. Okay, you wanted to enjoy. Now you enjoy. And when you suffer after this, then you will realize that I should have followed Krishna's advice which he has given in the Gita. So this is important. The yogi who knows that I and the super soul within all creatures are one, he then worships me. One who understands this Paramatma within my heart, he is Krishna, the Supreme Personality. He starts worshipping Krishna. And he reaches the culmination of the yoga ladder. Atma Upamyena Sarvatra Samam Pashyati Yorjuna Sukham Vaya Diva Dukham Sayogi Paramo Mataha He is a perfect yogi who, by comparison to his own self, sees the true equality of all beings, both in their happiness and distress, O Arjuna. So one is able to understand that everybody is spirit soul like me, so he unnecessarily does not give anybody pain. Because he understands that pain is not good. When somebody cuts my hand, I feel pain. Why should I be so insensitive that simply for satisfying my tongue, I should harm other living entities? So people are having great positions in society. They have various degrees in their name. They might be thought leaders. They might be educators. They might be leaders of society. But if they are causing harm to other living entities, then even basic sense is it not missing? This does not need any education. This is basic sense. Somebody cuts my hand, I feel pain. How can I cut somebody's hand or throat? My family members feel bad if I am killed. Their families, animals also have sentiments. They also feel very bad if their family member is killed. So how can I do that? Commit such atrocity simply for satisfying my tongue? So if such basic sense is missing, then how I can expect to have any knowledge of life? So thus those people who are causing harm to other living entities and animals, 
we cannot expect any knowledge from them because basic sanity is missing in life so thus yukta har viharasya regulation put very important so this sense yogi develops very easily because he understands what is happiness and distress he works very hard to relieve the other living entities of their distress even though you try your level best to keep the body fit it will not remain fit diseases will come we cannot remain disease free death will come and we'll pick up another body in next life so that is why real welfare activity is giving spiritual knowledge that is why once the bhagavad gita finishes krishna explains krishna will explain that yogi is very dear to him and there so many other people are dear to him but the dearest person to god who is he that krishna will explain at the end of last chapter 18th chapter he tells nachatasmat manushyeshu kashchin me priya kritama nobody is dear to me than the person who gives this confidential secret knowledge of bhagavad gita to others so thus if we want to become dear to god if we become dear to god then we are happy materially and spiritually both all the spiritual knowledge is revealed and materially also we are very nicely taken care so how do we become dear to god if we also understand and spread this message to others so i request all of you we are suffering only because of lack of this knowledge so please realize take all our help and please spread this word around this is the best philanthropic activity arjuna uvacha yoyam yogastvaya proktah samye na madhusudana etasyaham na pashyami chanchalatva sthitim sthira arjuna said o madhusudana the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable to me for the mind is restless and unsteady so krishna recommended this yoga system so that arjuna can explain krishna i cannot follow so all of us should take the learning when arjuna could not follow 5000 years ago who was trained as a brahmachari in gurukul then how can we do it in modern age where mind body is very weak and mind is always disturbed so many allurements are there our senses are not controlled mind is disturbed not possible so arjuna is telling it is impractical not even tough krishna is being told your system is impractical what you have told madhusudana because mind is restless and unsteady krishna is telling control the mind control the mind and control the senses with the control mind mind is very difficult to control arjuna is telling chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavadridham tasya ham nigraham manye vayor vasudushkaram for the mind is restless turbulent obstinate and very strong o krishna and to subdue it is it seems to me more difficult than controlling the wind so arjuna is telling i can control the wind arjuna's had very great knowledge of using mystic weapons by which water earth wind could be controlled but he is telling difficult than to control the wind is to control the mind wind nobody can control but arjuna is telling i can control wind but i cannot control mind so lord krishna let us see what he replies okay arjuna leave controlling mind no he is telling it is possible shri bhagavan vacha asanchayam mahabaho मनो दुर्निग्रह चल अभ्यास कौंतेय वैराग्येण च गृह्यते हियर कृष्णा गिव सल्यूशन हाउ वन कैन कंट्रोल द माइंड द ब्लेसिड लॉर्ड सेड ओ माइटी आम सन ऑफ कुंती इट इज अनडाउटेडली वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू कर्ब द रेस्टलेस माइंड बट इट इज पॉसिबल बाय कॉन्स्टेंट प्रैक्टिस एंड बाय डिटैचमेंट सो टू थिंग्स आर रिक्वायर्ड why mind goes in the past because we are attached or we were attached to certain things and why it goes in the future again because of attachment we are worried about something which may or may not happen in future so one has to practice detachment and this detachment automatically comes when a person performs the process of yoga so one has to uh, cultivate this knowledge that this world is temporary i am not this body 
and by cultivating knowledge one has to practice yoga system by practicing yoga system krishna has told here constant practice is required so this yoga system is very difficult ashtanga yoga what is recommended here so in kali yuga the process to achieve the same result control of mind is cheto darpana marjanam bhavan mahadavagni nirvapanam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam sankirtan is recommended chanting and hearing the names of god by this the dust from the mirror of mind is cleansed and one can see one self in the supreme self and what is our relationship with the supreme self so this constant practice is required that is why krishna tells in the ninth chapter satatam kirtayantu maam this kirtan has to be done satatam always constantly so 24 hours it is very simple we are now fond of scientific perspective of the things science means making experiments so let us have experiment in our life just please try to chant throughout the day the names of krishna and then you see the result and there is one specific combination which is mentioned in kali santra upanishad in various other scriptures brahmand puran in various places and that is hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare iti shodashak nam nam kali kalmash nashnam these 16 words destroy kali all the effects of this millennium which is called kali yuga nahatah partar upaye better solution than this sarva vedeshu drishyate could not be found by searching throughout the vedas so all these processes which are mentioned here they are bona fide gyan yoga or ashtang yoga or dravya yagya basic karma yoga all these things are there but then it is not practical karma yoga acting in krishna consciousness bhakti yoga these are the practical things for this age of kali yuga and the same result can be attained which was attained by doing this rigor in previous ages but one has to do it constantly krishna is telling by constant practice and detachment we have to even if we are doing constant practice detachment will follow automatically but it will take long time so if you do both things don't eat that thing which increases disease eat that thing which cures disease take medicines nicely prescription and proscription if we follow both we get quick relief from disease so this chanting is so powerful automatically detachment will come but may take long time if you want quick results quick control of mind practice detachment anything which is entangling you in this material world so try to practice detachment keep it away and at the same time constant practice of this sankirtan should be there under the guidance of a spiritual master so krishna has agreed it is undoubtedly very difficult but it is possible it is not impossible it is possible by constant practice detachment asanyatatmana yogo dushprap iti me matihi vashyatmana tu yatata shakyo vaptum upayatah for one whose mind is unbridled self realization is difficult work but he whose mind is controlled and who strives by right means is assured of success that is my opinion so krishna is telling do not think arjuna you will attain self realization without controlling the mind it is difficult but you have to do it and then you have to have the right means also then self realization is possible arjuna uvacha ayati shraddhayopeto yoga chalit manasah aprapya yoga samsiddhim kamgatim krishna gachati so arjuna seems to be afraid that this process is tough and mind can cheat me any time so what will happen to me if i am not able to perfect this arjuna said what is the destination of the man of faith who does not persevere who in the beginning takes to the process of self realization but who later desists due to worldly mindedness and thus does not attain perfection in mysticism so this question many can ask that i could not enjoy either this world because i left the sense objects for attaining spiritual perfection nor could i attain spiritual perfection i could not persevere on the path so what is the result kachinno bhaya vibhrashtash chinna bhram iv nashyati apratishtho mahabaho vimudo brahmana pathi o mighty arm krishna does not such a man 
being deviated from the path of transcendence perish like a riven cloud with no position in any sphere etan me sanshayam krishna chetum arhasya sheshatah vad anya sanshayasyasya cheta na yupapadyate this is my doubt o krishna and i ask you to dispel it completely but for yourself no one is to be found who can destroy this doubt shri bhagavan vacha parth naiveha namutra vinashas tasya vidyate nahi kalyan krit kaschit durgatim tat gachhati the blessed lord said son of pritha a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world one who does good my friend is never overcome by evil prapya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashvati samah shuchi nam shri matam gehe yoga bhrashto bhijayate the unsuccessful yogi after many many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy so even a small endeavor on this path saves a person from degradation into the animal species and if a person sincerely follows then one is assured of very good birth either on heavenly planets he will go there and there are many many planets where living standards are very high life span is very long the effect of old age diseases are very very minimal so even materially there is no loss because you have controlled the senses here you wanted to follow yoga but you could not don't worry you go there and enjoy many many more times for a very very long span of life or you take birth in a rich aristocratic family now there is one more advanced stage if a person is not very advanced then this will happen a person will go to heavenly planets then he will take birth in a aristocratic family or a pure family where again he can continue spiritual life but a special birth is given to advanced yogis and what is that athava yogi name va kule bhavati dhimatam etad dhi durlabhataram loke janma yadi drasham or he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom verily such a birth is rare in this world so this birth is rare from birth you are there in the family of spiritualists transcendentalists who are great devotees and have perfect wisdom of krishna consciousness and such people who take birth in great families become spiritual masters very advanced devotees this is meant for very highly elevated souls but even if you are not highly elevated person can go to heavenly planets and have a birth in rich family or very learned pure family so that he does not have to work very hard for attaining material resources he can save his time money is there or his senses are controlled from birth training is very nice so all such facilities are offered krishna is telling so materially there is no loss you enjoyed very nicely on different planets and then spiritually also there is no loss facilities there from the birth तत्र तम बुद्धि संयोगम लभते पौर्व देहिकम यतते च ततो भूयः संसिद्धो कुरु नंदना ऑन टेकिंग सच अ बर्थ ही अगेन रिवाइव्स द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ हिज प्रीवियस लाइफ एंड ही ट्राइज टू मेक फर्दर प्रोग्रेस इन ऑर्डर टू अचीव कंप्लीट सक्सेस ओ सन ऑफ गुरु पूर्वाभ्यासे न ते नैव रियते ही अवशोपि सह जिज्ञासुर अपि योगस्य शब्द ब्रह्माति वर्तते बाय वर्च्यू ऑफ द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ हिज प्रीवियस लाइफ यू ऑटोमेटिकली बिकम्स अट्रैक्टेड टू द योगिक प्रिंसिपल्स इवन विदाउट सीकिंग देम सच एन इंक्विजिटिव ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट स्ट्राइविंग फॉर योगा स्टैंड्स ऑलवेज अबव द रिचुअलिस्टिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स so as we saw the scriptures mainly contain karma kanda fruitive activities because materialist wants material enjoyment 
and small portion Upanishads introduce him to the spiritual life. So a yogi, he is not attracted by this fruitive activities portion of the Vedas and automatically he is attracted to higher yogic principles by virtue of previous life. So Krishna is telling, do not worry Arjuna. Materially, life is comfortable even if you are not successful. You get a good birth and automatically attraction will be there for yogic principles. So you can continue even in next life. Prayatnat yat manas tu yogi sam shuddha kil bishaha aneka janm sam siddhas tato yati param gatim But when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being washed of all contaminations, then ultimately, after many many births of practice, he attains the supreme goal. So it is not easy. Sometimes we become impatient. I am not able to understand God. There is confusion. So many theories are there. We are very small. Please understand. An ant. Can it understand about our mathematics and sciences, our governance systems? No. It is ant. Body does not support such processing of intelligence. So we are willing to understand about God who is creator of so many planets and so many universes. Not possible. So it takes many many births of practice of yoga. So he's telling Arjuna, do not worry. It is a long journey. After many, many births, one will and if one endeavors very hard, constant practice also takes many, many births. So this is very gradual process. A person does uh, Dravi Yajna, does charity, philanthropy, the beginning of Karma Yoga. Then a person is able to de develop some sanity. One cultivates the Vedic knowledge of the Upanishads, of the soul. Then further a person advances to the stage of Dhyana Yoga, starts meditating, then for many many births one has to practice this and then one attains Krishna Consciousness, knowledge of God. It is very difficult and a very long process. But another short process Krishna is telling here which is very practical. And what is that? Tapas vibhyo dhiko yogi jnane bhyo mato dhikaha yogi tasmad yogi bhavarjuna A yogi is greater than the ascetic, greater than the empiricist, and greater than the fruitive worker. Therefore, o Arjuna, in all circumstances, be a yogi. So these are various categories of people in this world. Karmi, Jnani, Tapasvi and Yogi. Karmi means majority fruity workers rather they should be called vikarmis karmi also uh, follows the injunctions of the vedas to enjoy material sense gratification now people are vikarmis they want to enjoy the senses without abiding by the laws thus there is great harassment by the nature and there is so much stress and anxiety in the lives of people so karmi who enjoys who works very hard to enjoy the sense objects in this world and when he is dissatisfied because he is following the rules and regulations of the Vedas, he has developed firm faith in the Veda. I did this thing, I attained the result, but I am not satisfied. Let us see what Vedas have to offer further. Then he goes to become Jnani. Then he under, oh, I am not the body, so I am not satisfied. And then one starts taking discomforts in life, tapasya. Because by tapasya he understands I will be able to purify my senses and mind and I will understand who am I. But greater than all of them is yogi, who directly engages in the service of God. Now, yogis could be of various kinds. Jnana yogi, dhyan yogi, karma yogi, bhakti yogi. All of them, uh, their aim is to get connected with God. So, yogi is topmost among all of them. But which kind of yogi is best? Because there are various kinds of yogis. That Krishna explains in this final verse of this chapter, which is very important. Yogi nama pi sarvesham madgate nantaratmana radhavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamo mataha. And of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshipping me in transcendental loving service is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. So Krishna has declared now 
Yogi naam api sarvesham. First of all, he told Arjun, please become yogi. Working to enjoy the result of your activity, that is foolishness. It is abominable work. Krishna has declared in previous chapters. Gyani is a very neophyte on spiritual perfection, and so is tapasvi. Become yogi. Now, among various kinds of yogis, yogi naam api sarvesham. Mad gatena antaratmana, who is always meditating upon me within his heart. Shraddhavan with great faith and love. Bhajate, bhajdhatu in Sanskrit means to render service. Yo ma, ma means me, unto me. He is thinking of me, antaratmana, within his heart, and he is engaged in bhajate, in my service. Same yukta tamo mataha, he is the best yogi. Because Arjuna expressed, this is impractical for me. I am a worldly man. I am a fighter, warrior. I have to rule kingdom, deal with politics and diplomacy, and I have my queens, my children in my palace. So how is it possible for me to go to jungle and do all these things? So Krishna, to encourage Arjuna, told, "Don't worry. You are already on the highest platform of yoga, because among all the yogis, the person." Who always meditates upon me within his heart and engages in my service, he is the best. So this is called the sublime process of bhakti yoga. So now in the first six chapters, Krishna has explained the process of karma yoga, and now Krishna will explain in the next six chapters the most important knowledge of bhakti yoga. Directly understanding bhakti yoga may not be possible for everyone. Thus, Krishna has gradually built up the philosophy and explained this yoga ladder, and gradual progression to explain how bhakti yoga is most simple, at the same time top most, highest, and most sublime. But the process is why it is so rare that people don't take to it, because it is only possible to execute this by the mercy of a pure devotee of Krishna, who is expert in bhakti yoga. And finding such a person who is pure devotee of Krishna is very, very rare. So, if somebody is fortunate to come in contact with pure devotee, then one can immediately advance in this most perfect form of yoga system. So, Krishna has concluded this chapter very beautifully, explaining uh, that a person who is yogi, he is actually sannyasi. Because he is perfectly renounced from any desire, even of moksha or liberation from this planet, or merging in the body of Krishna, his only desire, even if Krishna gives me more and more births, just to engage in his service, in his loving service, that's his only desire. So a yogi is actually renouncer; he is actual gyani. And Krishna explained this most difficult process, which is not practical in this age. We cannot follow Brahmacharya. First of all, Brahmacharya means Yagya Valki has explained complete cessation of sex life in mind also, in speech also, and of course, on the bodily physical platform. So, uh, sex desire should not come even in the mind. Is it possible in today's civilization, where you have all the sexual content on your phones, most downloadable content? Not possible. Very difficult for ordinary people. But still, Brahmacharya is important. But In other processes, in this yoga process, first you have to become brahmachari. First you have to go to jungle, leave your family, and then you practice yoga. But in the process of bhakti yoga or the karma yoga, it is the same thing. The perfection of karma yoga is bhakti yoga when a person does activities as told by Krishna. So that is feasible. You can offer the results of activities to Krishna, and when you are advanced, we do activities as per directed by Krishna. So in this way. The karma yoga or bhakti yoga is the possible and recommended process here. Yogi naam api sarvesham. So this is what Krishna recommends to Arjuna. Tasma sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmar yudhyacha. Therefore, always think of me within your heart and you fight. This is the best way of doing yoga. So sometimes people get confused. Oh, see, Krishna has rejected other processes. He described the yoga process, gyan, studying the Vedas, dhyan, and finally he told you do your duty very nicely. And so let us do our job and business nicely, and automatically that is the process of spiritual advancement. No, simply doing our duties is not uh, yoga, but always thinking of Krishna within the heart and doing the duty as directed by Krishna and offering the results of our duties to Krishna. That is recommended. Yes, that is perfection. 
and that is practical for everyone so we all can do this so i request all of you we all can start practicing this thing if we cannot do activities as directed by krishna whatever activities we are doing wherever we are situated we can start offering the results of activities to krishna to spread this mission of krishna to spread this knowledge to others so that others can be benefited and get freedom from unlimited miseries of birth death old age and disease and while we are carrying out our duties we should always try to think of krishna within the heart and that is possible in this age by a chanting of krishna's names and especially hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare now the most important chapters of bhagavad gita are about to begin so please join us for next chapter thank you so much for hearing hare krishna